Kate when we are starting a live video and hopefully Hi! Everyone say hi Facebook world! Hi Facebook, hi, Facebook world. world! Hi Facebook world! Let's get Yamsuf! And yes, I am wearing a Yamsuf outfit! Heck yeah! Do we get it? Yamsuf! Oh, amazing! Um, okay, so Facebook world, welcome to our Parsha Shear. We have a beautiful crowd here tonight and we just learned a song that my friend Sarah Winter um, taught me. Uh, this song is strangely not from Parsha Bashalach and it's also um, not even related to this time. Actually, it's from what's called the Simchat Beit HaShoeva. Does anyone know what the Simchat Beit HaShoeva was? It's like this esoteric thing that you kind of only hear about once you make Aliyah. Like growing up in LA, I never knew what this was. Um, but Simchat Beit HaShoeva was this party. This party that they had at the end of Sukkot. And it said that if you have not been to a Simchat Beit HaShoeva, you don't even know what joy is. And the Simchat Beit HaShoeva was the culmination of the Sukkot festival. We'll, we'll come back and I'll tell you why we're talking about this now. And it was so filled with joyous song. And they had torches. And the torches they were everywhere around Jerusalem. That's why if you look around tonight, we have fire everywhere also. Um, and it says, this, this Simchat Beit HaShoeva is the joy of the water drawing ceremony. How bizarre. They were drawing, how bizarre. Do, 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 do. How bizarre. How bizarre. <laughs> so there's this weird ceremony that they would go to the old city in Jerusalem and they would go to King David's personal wellspring and they would draw water and they would pour it all over the temple and it was like the highest, best joy that ever existed for all time. Did you guys ever hear about this water drawing ceremony? So this is like, if you wanted to go to Israel like a couple thousand years ago, and you're like, yo, when's the best time to go to Israel, man? You know, <laughs> everyone would be like, oh, snap, you've got to check out the Simchat Beit HaShoeva. <laughs> so this was like the greatest joy that's ever been known to mankind, and it's a precedent for our future Geula. Um, so obviously tonight, B'Shalach, the splitting of the sea, leaving Egypt, and I'm sorry we missed the last few weeks together, so we missed all the plagues together, but it's time to leave Egypt, both then and now in our lives. And that is a precedent for whatever you're going through. Raise your hand if you're going through something. Oh, look, all the hands are up, surprise, right? <laughs> um, whatever you're going through to have faith that one day you will experience great joy, whether in this lifetime or next. So for those that know, for those that don't know, I lost, I didn't lose. My mother passed away a week and a half ago. And uh, sorry if that's a stunner to some of you that are like, oh, this is awkward, and here she's teaching a class. Um, but I would, um, in her process of going to be, going up to Hashem, it was very hard for me, obviously. Uh, and so I would just sing this song to myself over and over because in my deep sadness, um, hi mom, that's weird. Um, in my deep sadness, I, I knew that I had to hold on to a vision of future joy. So I was singing this to myself again and again. And then when I was learning in the Kabbalah about Parsha B'Shalach, of course, going through the water is tied to this specific song of the Simcha Beit HaShoeva, tied to the specific ceremony of drawing water with joy, that something about the water allows us to purify and cleanse and go forward in life. Um, so we're going to sing this for the Facebook world. They just learned it, but you guys are going to get it great. Here we go. Ready? Thank you, Sarah Winter, for teaching me. Velo haita chaser. That means there wasn't even an outdoor area. Birushalayim. She in Jerusalem. She no. That didn't. Meira shine. Meor beitashoeva. From the light of the water drawing ceremony. Let's chat that one more time. Velo haita chaser. Support me, please. Birushalayim. So if anyone is also going through something difficult, you can always turn to song. Because song opens our hearts, and for the next hour, we'll learn all 
the reasons why. <laughs> um, also, um, our beautiful hostess put Tzedakah in here, that's Hefger, meaning ownerless. So if you want, in honor of my Ima, Shoshana Bat Ariel, you could just take and pass and put a coin in there. Because um, obviously, um, yeah, behind. Pass. Okay, now I know I just said something really heavy, but my mom was like the funniest person on earth and she would not want people bored or quiet. You can laugh. She loved fart jokes. <laughs> so like, really, like we don't have to, just because my life's a little heavy, we don't have to be heavy tonight. It's an honor to her if we are uplifted and spirited and joyous. Okay, so the plan tonight, as we discussed, but now I'm sharing with the Facebook world, we are going to do a history of music in Torah from before creation all the way until the Messianic times. We're going to weave Parshat B'Shalach in and out. And does anyone remember, why am I talking about music? I thought Parshat B'Shalach is where we go through the sea. And by the way, did everyone come through the sea on the way in? Yeah. 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 Awesome nice. effect. Thank you, 99 cent store. <laughs> <laughs> um, Facebook world, they got to walk through Yamsuf as they came in. It was very exciting. Um, so wait, why are we discussing music if it's the splitting of the sea? As Yashir! As Yashir! Because as, as was pretty much after we went through the sea, actually, we bust out three million people into the original flash mob. Hello, have you guys ever been in an awesome flash mob? No? Oh my god, you gotta try it out. See what? You've seen me in the flash mobs? I know. <laughs> I'm always at the front. <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the original flash mob, if you were ever wondering, was actually where? Where was the original flash mob? The other mob? side. Yeah. The other side of the sea. Yeah, hello, Jews. We are like so cool. <laughs> um, and so because of this original singing and dancing flash mob, um, this Shabbat is called Parshat Shira the Shabbat of song. And it's really all about singing, and I found no better opportunity than to drop my favorite topic on you on this fine evening. Um, listen, thank God all my sponsorship uh, concluded, and all the money that I got from all the generous people around the world, <laughs> it was like, oh look, it's at zero now. And this week I just put out one post, and like seven people were like, bam, I'm sponsoring, bam, I'm sponsoring. So I have a list of amazing people. If you want to know why you had that delicious pizza or that yummy gin or this firewood, it is because of these amazing people. So thank you so much for stepping up and making this night possible for us. Devorah Peretz, Tova Abadi, Shannon Gordon, Lee Neckemeyer, Robin Russell, Mandy Frankel, Esther freaking Goldberg, and of course to our amazing hosts, the Kehan Kashani Gudovich family, who also contributed generously. Um, I'd like to take a moment and dedicate this year to the people that I want to dedicate it to. You please dedicate it to whoever you want to dedicate it to. The Power of Learning Torah is epic and awesome. We're about to bring down so much light. And so maybe you want to send it like to somebody you know. I'm obviously going to send it for an Aliyat Neshama for my Ima, Shoshana Bar Ariel, and my precious, one of my best friends, Abba, also went up this this week. So he should also have an Aliyat Neshama, Tzip, I love you, for Mikhail Meir Ben Chaim. Uh, also, um, the tragedy that happened at Merom this year, I was not far from it. I was on the hill, and I just saw a post that one of the 16-year-old boys who was hurt is still in need of a push lima. His name is Yosef Azriel ben Chaya Michal. So, um, oh my gosh, and if you're dedicating it to somebody you know, take a minute. I also, this is not my sheer by any means. There's like a group of people that are behind the scenes every single week, just volunteering. I could not do it without you guys, so thank you Yaakov, and thank you Rivka, and thank you Anna, and thank you Tamar, and thank you Linda Miriam, thank you Jess, and everybody who helped, like, I, I'm speechless that I have a whole team that we bring Torah down to LA together, so, cool. Everyone dedicated it to somebody they know and love? Yeah? yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. I'm going to start with a story. Everybody loves stories. You are all making me filled with so much anxiety. Blame, blame, blame. Come sit. And um, Lynn and Kenny, there's a couch here that's perfect for my parents' best friends of 50 years. 
Those are my parents' best friends of 50 years. Aww. So if you want, we can make way. There's a little couch here. It might be comfy, it might not, but if not, we'll, we'll sort it out for you. <laughs> It's a true story, and when I heard this story, I was like, oh my lord, this is unbelievable. Oh, my glitter's coming off. Okay. True story. Learned it from a man named Rabbi Keith Flax. He should be blessed. So, there's a story. Does anyone, has anyone ever been to Israel on an experience, and they tell you, okay, after shul, someone is going to take you home and invite you over for Shabbat? Has that ever happened to anyone here? No. Yes, no, yes, no. Yeah, yes, there's this yes. idea. It's very Israel. It's not so L.A. <laughs> you know, show up at shul. You're the random person. You stand there, and they're like, hi, I would have a meal for me. They're going to think you're a creep. But in Israel, this is the custom. In Israel, you guys ever had this experience? No? You go to a shul. You go anywhere in the world. You want to go to Tzfat. You want to go anywhere. You go to shul, and at the end of shul, if you don't have a meal, it's okay. Because the Gabbai will say to you, if anyone needs, do you know this? Yeah, the Gabbai will say, if anyone needs a meal, please see me after, and they'll make sure to set everyone up so that no one goes home for Shabbat without a meal, okay? It's so special. Anyways, the story goes that there was this young man, and he didn't have a meal, so when they said, would anyone like a meal, he raised his hand, and he went home with a family. So anyways, they're eating dinner, and the little boy says, can we sing that song again from synagogue? And so the family's like, sure, which song? And he's like, I think it was like a... Uh, uh, Lekka Dodi? I've told this story before at the Shear, so if you've been, you may have heard it. Do you remember this song? No? no? And they're like, oh, well, that's a shul song. We don't really sing it at the Friday night table, but okay, let's do it. Pause. Okay, so they did the whole song, and it was awesome, and he's like, wow, can we do that again? And they're like, Okay, Wait, you don't know this? You're sorry. Okay, so like, then of course later in the meal he asked to sing it again and they're like, well, okay, I, all right, whatever. So anyways, they're meeting all their guests and finally they get around to this boy and they say to him, all right, let's do it. Who are you? Where do you come from? And he goes, Shalom, my name is Mohammed. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you mean Moshe? And he's like, no, Mohammed. And they're like, okay, Mohammed, hello. You know? And they're like, and Mohammed, where are you from? And he's like, I'm from Ramallah. <laughs> and they're like, you mean Ramla? He's like, no, Ramallah. <laughs> so they, and then I love my Arab cousins, but like, and I've had many of them at my Shabbat table, but like, when you find out that Mohammed, from Ramallah is at your table, you're a little bit curious to know what's going on. My friends in the back, I'm so close to the fire, but if you want, there's hand warmers, okay? Just they're know, amazing. they exist. And they're amazing. Okay, so anyways, so they said, Muhammad, uh, what's your story? I, I, I don't, what's your story? And he goes, okay, I'll tell you the story. The story goes like this. I was in high school in Ramallah. They asked us to do a high school project. I decided to do mine on the Jews because everybody growing up always says the Jews are the worst, the Jews are bad, the Jews stink, like the Jews are to blame for everything. And so what happened is I started doing research and I found out that that's just one opinion and that there's actually another opinion that they're just good people who want a homeland, you know? And so they're like, oh, that's so interesting. So what happened? He's like, well, I started to get bullied and my life started to get threatened and I, I realized I had to leave Ramallah or else my life was in danger just because I did this report. So they're like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. He's like, yeah, yeah, it's really crazy. And so they're like, so, so what happened? He's like, so I went to my mom and I said, mom, I have to leave. My life is on the line. And she goes, well, Mohammed, I have something to tell you. Now, if you've been living in Israel, you know the story that many, many, many Jews are living in the Arab towns as Arabs. And she says, we're really Jewish. I met your father, I fell in love. And the truth is you have Jewish ancestry. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'll see you again because this is back I think in like the 70s so it wasn't like big internet time, you know? And so he says, so take this picture and good luck and I love you. So he ends up at the shul and they say, wow, that's an amazing story. Can we see the picture? And he's like, sure. So he brings out the picture 
and it's a picture of his family standing around the grave of his ancestor. His ancestor happens to be buried in Sfat. His ancestor happens to be buried in Sfat next to the Holy Arizal. His ancestor happens to be Rev Shlomo Alkabetz, the author of Lecha Dodi. Wow. And we know this because if you look at Lecha Dodi, you see, um, uh, uh, what's the first verse? Shamor v'zachor v'dibor likrat kala mikdash melech What's the next one? It's with a hey. Anyways, the name Shlomo is written into the Lecha Dodi. Wow. And so the reason this story is so amazing is because it's in our blood. He didn't know. He had never heard Lecha Dodi before. He just heard it, and when he heard it, he's like, I have to hear that again. I have to hear that again. And it was his great-grandfather that wrote the song. Oh, wow. So music is an our music, our Jewish music. It's we can all go home. That's enough of a story, right, Josh? Oh. <laughs> Seriously, you're going to tell that to your wife. I will. Yeah. And you guys want to know something amazing? He has a daughter named Neely. <laughs> yes, after which Neely. <laughs> yeah. So, music comes into us at what point? I said we are going to talk about the history of music, weave it into this parsha, Shira. When does music come from? When is the first time we hear music? Answers. Birth. Oh, good. We'll get there. But before birth, even, where's the first time we hear music? In utero. Oh, yep. And what about before that? Funny enough, it's Rav Shlomo Alkabetz himself. <laughs> I didn't even realize this, but it's Rav Shlomo Alkabetz himself who talks about the ministering angels in Shammai. And one thing I didn't tell you, I was going to open up about my mom is that it says that when you get to the other side, the soul delights in the heavenly music it hears, the symphonies that are playing in heaven. When you cross to the other side and you've completed your mission here on this earth, the reason I'm not so depressed is because my mom is being sweetly escorted by these heavenly angels and lifted up through heavenly symphonies that are more and more glorious as she ascends. Heaven is like a big old symphony. We know music from before we were even born. And then yes, in the womb. Who said the womb? Was that you, Cindy? What do we hear in the womb? <laughs> I was never the dancer. <laughs> a heartbeat, yeah, there's rhythm. We are literally introduced to rhythm the second that we are conceived. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. We're literally introduced to rhythm in that minute. So we have heaven, we have the womb, and then we get our own heartbeat. We're introduced to drums. Mm -hmm. And hey, nobody told me my headscarf looks funny. You guys are not my <laughs> friends. <laughs> Just have you wouldn't tell me if there was food in my teeth either, would you? <laughs> I probably oh, I You would. would. Yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's more, okay? So we're just gonna go through real quick. What about like basically the entire universe? What's the entire universe made of anyways? Light, water. Light, which is essentially, energy. what is light? Energy, which is, what is energy? Uh, it's vibrations, it's sound waves, guys. Literally, literally, all of quantum physics, which is based on string theory, tells us about molecules and atoms that create energy. And if everything is energy, then everything is vibes. You know, you walk in, someone has bad vibes, you feel it, because mm -hmm. vibes are real. And vibes are essentially music. By the way, what something I didn't mention is that back in the day, um, I mentioned the heartbeat, but I didn't mention that Kabbalistically, do you know that the ancient Kabbalists could heal people just based on listening to their pulse? In fact, every single, I'll show you a chart, every <laughs> single and a sphera, Kabbalistic sphera, is connected to uh, a pulse. Every sphera is connected to a nekuda, like the, the... Is it like Chinese medicine? It's, it's exactly where Chinese medicine comes from. Mm -hmm. Chinese medicine is based on a Kabbalistic system where each one of the energy channels is associated, sorry, it's not so clear, is associated with a different nekuda. Mm -hmm. And these nekudot are associated with a rhythm of the pulse. And a Kabbalist used to be able to feel your pulse, determine what was the imbalance in your Kabbalistic sphero, and then tell you a proper course of healing. Mm -hmm. Essentially because of rhythm, because of the music. The music of our body is what tells us if we're in good health or not. 
Whoa! <laughs> Come on, guys, that's trippy. Is that not trippy? Yeah. Say what? That's why you're so quiet? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> so it's almost like what the doctors were doing back in the day was checking our vibes. Hmm. How's your vibe? That's what the doctors were doing. Wow. So now we've discussed that he music comes from before we're even conceived, that heaven is filled with symphonies. And then we get into the womb and we start hearing our mothers, hi mom, hi God. Uh, I gotta get used to this. I'm so used to saying hi God, but now it's hi God, hi mom. Hi mom. If anyone slips and falls, or like I said, like farts by accident, that is so my mom <laughs> coming through tonight. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So should we let you know? Yeah, let us let me know if anything ridiculous happens to you. That means my mom was present with you. Um, okay, so now we said that we know music now from heaven. We know music from the womb. We know music from our own heartbeat. We know music from our pulse. You know what else? What's the first word of the Torah? Bereshit. Bereshit. Now you know it's so cool. If you scramble the word Bereshit, you get Shirat Av. The song of our father, or Shirat Aleph Bet, the song of the Aleph Bet, because the whole Torah is essentially one long name of God, but it's also one long song. And Breshit, in the beginning, God started to sing. In fact, Reb Shlomo talks about how God did not speak the world into creation. We say, and then God said, let there be light. And then God said, let there be luminaries. And then God said, let there be creepy crawlies. <laughs> Reb Shlomo says, nah, 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 nah. It didn't happen like that. Reb Shlomo said that God was chilling up in his sukkah, actually, because God conceived of the world in his own sukkah. That's the Torah for another day. And he's like, let there be light, let there be light, da da da, yeah, 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 let there be light. <laughs> God yeah. did not speak, the, can you imagine God's like, okay, let there be mountains. Heck no, you know, God is like, my mama mountains, mama mama mountains, mama 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 mountains, mama, you know, like, can you imagine God creating an octopus? <laughs> like, there's no way God's like, let there be an octopus. You know? Eight octaves. It's too amazing. And the eight octaves, right, for sure. So even Breshit, even the very first word of the Torah, it is revealed that we are a culture of music. Guys, ooze and ahs really help me. <laughs> Oh, you know what also really helps is pictures. If anyone takes pictures, I always use them for the next week advertising, so please feel free. <laughs> um, now, you know, some other really interesting things, because every time that I study Torah, what I try to do is I try to study an equal amount of science, because I always want to make sure that for anyone that feels skeptical, we back it up. Well, NASA, if you believe in them and anything they do, actually says that the sun has, I got some political joke, laughter in there. Uh, someone's a conspiracist in the room. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, know, I know where my people at. <laughs> now I could say that, sorry mom. <laughs> my mom forbid me from ever saying anything conspiratorial, but <laughs> my dad's cool with it, so. <laughs> Hi dad. <laughs> okay. So anyways, NASA says that the sun, we know the sun has flares, correct? Well, did you know that they've actually been able to measure those flares and each flare makes a different noise? So if you put a microphone close to the sun, you hear like, ha, ah, ha, ah, ah, from each flare. Raise your hand if you knew that the sun flares make music. Human resonance. Say, say it louder. Human re resonance. I, I can't hear what you're saying. She's saying. Human resonance. They tra they, they tra Shimon resonance? Schumann resonance. Yeah, Schumann resonance. That's the scientific name for it? Yeah. yeah. I thought I was making it Jewish. <laughs> the, Sh the Sherman resonance? <laughs> Schumann resonance is the sun flares. It's the, it's the, the way that they track the sun flares. There you go. The Ramchal. The Ramchal. Back in the day. Where's the, where are Italians at? <laughs> Ramosha Chaim Mutsato says that the planets sing from his book, Adir Bamarom. And the Zohar says, get ready to trip your faces off. Joseph, you ready? Yeah. First time she I gotta call you out. See if you have the stamina to come back. <laughs> oh, wow. No, you gotta be ready to like be brutalized here, you know? The Zohar says that the constellations make music. 
And that the music of the sun is so wonderful that our soul would leave our body if we could hear it. Wow. Thank you. Now we're talking on here. It's been a few weeks off, but we're getting back in the vibe. Now you think, okay, Neely, that's cute. So you got some science, you got some sun flares, you got some constellations, some wombs, some heaven. All right, that's good. What about us? What are we called? Who are we? Human. We're human, but like uh, those of us with bigger attitudes and schnozzes. <laughs> we are Israel, correct? We are the people of Israel? Well, then go figure that actually the word Israel actually recombines to form what? Hey, musicians in the back. Hey, people of Israel. Yisrael is just reconfigured sheer El, the song of God. And in honor of my mom, I will dab because all of her, all of, she was a teacher in high school for in Shalhevet for like 30 years and her students have been sending me videos of her twerking and dabbing and all sorts of amazing things. So if you think I'm bold, I'm a watered down version. Our national mission is to sing the song of God. And as we said, that is the Torah. But that's our national mission. You just thought you were Israel. Little did you know that your whole job is to make your life into a song for God. And a beautiful one. Woo! And it gets better because what's our number one weapon as Jews? Our voice. It's true, our voice, but specifically, what do we, what do we have? Torah. Our Torah, that's true, but let's say I need something in life, what do I do? Community. Prayer. Prayer. Was that you? You succeeded your first cheer. Woo! Prayer. And would you guess that the word shira is the exact same gematria as the word tefillah? Stop. That our prayers. Stop. Keep going. Keep going. This was up. Do you like my mom's clingly earrings? Shira equals tefillah, right? And that's why in Psuke de Zimra, what do we do before we pray every morning? We prepare ourselves. A zemer is a tune. These are the verses of song. We're supposed to, we're, it's, I don't, I don't know. God bless the lit box, but I don't know if it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a song. These are the songs that open our hearts. Zemer has a double meaning. Zemer also means song. Anyone in the back know what zemer means? You must be cold. Don't you want to come around the fire? Have some hand warmers. Guys, you're killing my Jewishness. How am I supposed to take care of you if you're cold? They are. They have. They have. <laughs> Attacking yeah, them with warmth and love. Um, I don't even, oh, what's the second meaning of the word zemer? <laughs> to cut, to prune. You know what psuke de zimra is? We're supposed to cut away all of our extra thoughts so that we can just be there with God. That's psuke de zimra. We sing because when we sing, we forget everything else. Tell me the last time your song came on and you were busy worried about your worries. Anyone, when your song came on the radio and you're like, shoot, what am I gonna do about my finances? <laughs> no, when your jam comes on, where are you? You're in it, you're with it. That's our tefillah, that's our shira, that's our psuki. Now really quick, we're gonna do a zoom through the Bible. We're gonna take a stop at the shira tayam and we're gonna go through. Thank you for being our fireman. We, we have an official fireman doing our fire. He's already come back yeah, twice, so I'm safe with him. I could keep making jokes. Yeah. Oh. Hi, Mom. She's always messing with me. Um, it, it's also Rem. I don't know. Keep the amazing questions for after, because or else we'll never get through the cards. But can you please keep it for after? Because you know we have an after fall. No, I can't party. We have an after gathering. Right. <laughs> after for no party for me. Party for you. Just so you know, does anyone know somebody by the name Yuval? Raise your hand if you know a Yuval. Are there any Yuvals here tonight? Any chance? You have a brother named Yuval? No. So everyone, since a lot of people know Yuval, that was really weird. Let's do that again. Who knows Yuval? That's so weird. Look at how many people. So you can tell. Dave. You can tell your friend Yuval that Yuval was the first musician in the Bible and that he was called the father of those who handle the lyre, the harp, and the pipe. So the first instruments in the Bible, you could say, are the lyre, the harp, and the pipe. That's Genesis 4.21. 
But actually, you know what the very first instrument was? It was not the lyre, the harp, or the pipe. This is a really cool Torah. Really cool Torah. Drum roll. Drum roll? What was the, who wants to take a guess? What was the very first instrument? You gotta get creative. Does no one want to come around the fire? Me? The drums. Drums. Close. So, Joseph for the win! <laughs> Careful, there's prizes. <laughs> um, the first instrument was the shofar. Why? Where do we see the first shofar? It's an amazing teaching. You ready? Close, but no, because we're talking, Yuval is only Genesis 4.21. We didn't get to Avram yet. What's before that? No. It says when God blew the spirit of godliness into the body of Adam, that Adam was actually the first shofar, and the sound that resonated out of Adam when God blew life into the body was the sound of the shofar. You began with a fart. You began with an enormous fart. <laughs> exactly, or a holy one at least. Arrow in there for you. Okay, just some other places, just so you know where we start talking about music in the Bible after Yuval, right? So you know what? We'll just give it an update for the folks in the back. Let's do this from the beginning. Here we go, guys. What's the first thing we learned about music? That music starts where? In? Heaven. Heaven. In heaven. We're already hearing the holy symphonies of the ministering angels according to Shlomo Alkabetz. We learned the Lecha Jodi story, which we'll talk about later. Where's the next place we learn about it? The womb. The womb. Perfect. Because we hear the rhythm. To the beat of the rhythm of the night. Dancing <laughs> till the morning light. Forget about the world. The rhythm's the gotten you. We can leave this all behind. But I'm not allowed to dance either. Shoot. The rhythm got you. This is really challenging. Mm. <laughs> You're just moving. You got it. No, I'm not allowed to dance. Okay. Um, so the womb, the harpy, we talked about vibrations, that everything in the universe is a vibration, which is essentially music. We talked about Bereshit, which is also? God. Shirat Ah, very good. The song of God, or Shirat Aleph Bet. We talked that, according to Reb Shlomo, God did not speak the world into creation. He? Sang. Sang. Very good. We talked about the fact that our name is Yisrael, which is also? Shirat You know I'm doing this review for you, right? Okay, Shir Kel, the song of God. We talked about the fact that song and tefillah, shira and tefillah are the same gematria. And finally we said the first musician, who was he? Yuval. Good, guys, you're passing with flying colors. And the first instrument was actually? Shofar. And how was that? Why was that a shofar? Hashem blew into Adam. Hashem blew into Adam the sound, perfect. Okay, other times we hear music, but I'm not gonna talk about it, I just want you to have context. It says that angel, the angel of Esau in the fight with Yaakov, why does he have to go to our Esau and Yaakov? Why does, why does Yaakov have to go? Because the angel of Esau has to do what? There, okay, let me give you context, I'm sorry. There's this epic, ba okay. Adam and Eve, Noah, world gets destroyed, Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov. Now we're on Yaakov, and Yaakov is in a wrestling match for his life, essentially. And he's in a wrestling match with the angel of Esau. And in the text of the Bible, it says that the angel of Esau has to bounce. He's like, peace out, Yaakov. Our wrestling match is over. Why does Esau's angel have to go? Did he get called back? He has to go sing songs to God. So we even have the angel of Esau singing songs. We have Yaakov telling his sons to take from the Zmirat, the Zemir, like we talked about, of the Aretz down to the Pharaoh in Egypt, which he didn't know was Yosef. We have the idea that, ooh, this is gorgeous. It says that in Midrash Rabbah, during the 22 years that Yaakov tended flocks, he was praising God. And it says that a wind carried these arias for almost a thousand years until they were revealed to King David, who then put them into his Tehillim. Wow. wow. Who's the Please speak louder. I want Facebook to hear you also. Wow. The Shirmala, the Tehillim one, uh, 120 till 130. Those are those are Yaakov's? Those when are Yaakov's. I think Rav Biederman is the one who said that. That Yaakov Avinu so was from dancing. Yeah, it's Midrashat, but it's saying Rav Biederman, right. I think it's right. where I got it from. Sure, yeah. Was he, when Yaakov Avinu was learning at night, instead of being afraid, he was singing the Sheremalas. Wow, did you guys hear that? When Yaakov Avinu was tending to the flocks or learning at night, instead of being afraid, he was singing. And it says the wind carried these arias for a thousand years. You never know what your music is going to do, you know? Like Shlomo Karlibav also used to say that when you're walking through the streets of the world, like especially here in like, you know, this so high, so low place, that you could purify the air just by singing as you walk. 
So a lot of times I'll just like try to sing it to Helim as I walk because it says you're purifying the air around you. Finally, in just another, as we're getting through the context of the Bible, there's a very important time when Yaakov gets sung to. Does anyone know what it is? Mm, he told that oh, Sarah. Alive. Yes, Sarah, but Asher. Sarah, daughter of Asher, one of the tribes, right? Asher is one of the 12 tribes. She had a beautiful voice and she played the harp. And when they needed to reveal to Yaakov that Yosef was still alive, they brought in Sarah to sit next to Yaakov and sing, Od Yosef Chai, Od Yosef Chai. Yeah, da, 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 od Yosef Chai, because Yaakov had to change his whole model of reality to think for a minute after 20 years that perhaps Yosef was actually still alive. So, wow. Okay, and then, contextually, we're already down to Yosef, which means we're already in Egypt, which means we're already getting out, and now we have the biggest, amazingest song, which is... Our Parsha, which I didn't even tell you is Parsha... Bishalach. Let's try that again. Parsha. Bishalach. One more times, you will remember it. Parsha. Bishalach. It works. I'm telling you. You guys will see. You'll go home tonight. You'll be like, oh, we learned Parsha Bishalach. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There it is. <laughs> what do we sing at the sea? What do we sing? What's that song? Az Yashir. Right? Az Yashir. Az Yashir Moshe. Israel. went to camp for with me. Oh God, that's awkward. <laughs> Exodus. Da -da 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 -da. What? They're singing at home. Yeah, right. 1520. All right. Guys, how are we doing over here? Doing good? <laughs> We're feeling patient. If I'm about halfway through, that's good for everyone. Yes. Doesn't matter if you don't like it, get up and go home. <laughs> <laughs> As Yashir. Um, so let me just give you a quick context because we're not going to really get into it in the Parsha. Um, the plagues have all happened. It's really intense. The plagues take place over the course of an entire year, by the way. Whoa. Yeah, most people don't know that. They think it's like a day of blood, a day of frogs. No, it was either a week of plague and three weeks break or three weeks of plague and a week break. Mm. So the plagues were very intense and there was 10 of them. So it took the course of almost a year. Okay, so they've seen some intense suffering. Finally, finally, after the plague. Say what? 2021. 2021, right. Well, yes, I mean, yes, because the truth is we are at the end of time. We're in the year 5782. Geula is supposed to happen no later than the year 6000. That leaves us around 200 years at worst case scenario, but God defines himself as a compassionate God. Likely we're going to come out before then, please God, even tonight. Amen. And yes, Amen. of course, there's going to be crazy plague before Geula because this is the precedent. And that's a very important thing for this Parsha of the Bible and for all the Parshas is to realize that it's just a precedent. It wasn't like there was once a splitting of the sea, there was once an exodus, and that's it, game over. No, this is all preparing us for what's to come, which is going to be a super epic version. That's why, grammatically, can anyone tell me why when Moshe and three million people bust out into the original flash mob, why do they sing Az Yashir? What is Az Yashir grammatically? Can anyone help me? Until they sing. Is it until they sing? It's future tense. We will sing. And so most of the commentators say that they're not just referring to this time, but the reason they were so ecstatic and burst out into three million people dance is because they had a prophetic vision of the final Geula that we will please God experience. And they saw us, they saw us maybe, you know, crossing the Pacific or whatever it's going to take. Atlantic? What's on the other side? Atlantic. You know, go both ways. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> We're very modern. <laughs> um, but yes, it says Az Yashir because apparently, did you guys know this? That at, at Yam Soup, when the people were going through, it wasn't just like, woo, peace out, Egypt, bye bye, Pharaoh. It was they saw us. They saw Leah ben Yehuda getting to finally make it home to Eretz Yisrael with the temple. And they were so stoked that it wasn't just we're singing now. I mean, can you imagine your personal redemption? Can you imagine seeing a perfect, clear vision of that? Wouldn't you be like, Az Yashir Moshe, woo woo! And have you thought of it? Three million people bursting out the song. What's the most people you ever sing with? Oh. Hundred? 
Like, anyone ever done one of those Kulu looms? Have you seen those? Does anyone know what a Kulu loom is? No, a oh my gosh, look up Alkol Ele Kulu loom. A Kulu loom is this new thing that was started in Israel where they put like a, you know, a stadium of people and they have like someone like maybe with an energy similar to me get up and be like, okay, all of you sing this part and all of you sing that part. And then they have like 50,000 people singing like Alkol Ele. They're doing a round with thousands of people? Uh, what? Like a round? Like a musical round? you got to look it up. You'll cry. It's so beautiful. Kulu Loom. Yeah, it's like an orchestra of voices. It's stunning. But can you imagine now what three to perhaps six million people may have sounded like singing about the future Geula? Um, I was going to say it later, but I'll say it now. One of the things that I learned from, and I'll get to the source when I get there, but is that we are actually meant to sing this song every single day that before we sing it, before you start saying Az Yashir, if you're holding in Shachari, and if you're not, okay, maybe one day, but if you're already praying Shachari and you sing Az Yashir, when you sing this, it's the song of the sea for anyone that doesn't know, right? We were in, and every single day in our daily prayers, we sing this song called the song at the sea, which is the exact same words as the song at the sea thousands of years ago. So it says that before you start those words, you're supposed to prep yourself envision what it must have been like them and uh, I'll give a plug for myself because my mm -hmm. shear last year was really good in my eyes mm -hmm. and it was the experience of going through Yamsu so if you want to know what it was like according to the Midrash to go through the split sea the the trees that you could pick the fruits off of the oh I brought a straw my dad gave me a straw and said can you use this in your class tonight and I said, for you, Dad, anything. He's like, really? You can use a straw? I said, yeah, I can use a straw. Because one of the midrashim was, as they went through the split sea, there were these little straws, and they could have, like, lacroix or, oh like, <laughs> gin and juice. <laughs> That's my kind of <laughs> So, yeah. So, if you want to know about the experience of what it was like to go through Yamsuf, you could look up Neely Selem B'Shalach, and there's an hour and a half lesson of the actual experience of what it was like to go through the sea. Tonight we're sticking to music just because it appealed to my heart. Okay, so yes, before we say Az Yashir, we're supposed to stand there and envision what it was like to go through and also envision our personal redemption and what that will look like for you. So there is national redemption, that's called Mashiach. That's where everybody has an awesome party and there's peace in the world. Amen. But there's, amen, thank you. Amen. But there's personal redemption. And Tamar, that's whatever you need in your life. And Rivka, personal redemption is what you need in your life. And Sarla, that's what you need in your life. All of us are dreaming of something, whether it's Shalom Bayi, whether it's a spouse, whether it's your children, whether it's finances, whether whatever it is, we're all dreaming of some form of, or for your children perhaps, we're all dreaming of some redemption for ourselves. That's the vision we're meant to have when we stand in Shachari every day. So, my holy from friends in the back, tomorrow when you're davening Shachari, before you hit Az Yashir, <laughs> you know, He's got a beard, she's got a mikpacha. You know they're davening shachari tomorrow. <laughs> when you guys stand to, to speak Az Yashir tomorrow, you stand before and you say, wait, let me take a minute and imagine, A, what it was like at Yamsuf. And by the way, if I'm saying Hebrew words that you don't know, please do tell me because I'd rather clarify than not. You young man, need some hand warmers. <laughs> Can I please get a hand warmer for this very helpful gentleman over here? Mama Nini, Mama Nini, you know? Mama Nini. That's empty. Please God, that's my personal redemption. Amen. Okay. So isn't that cool, by the way? Very cool. Yeah, applause! Okay, fine. Um, okay, two more things about... Uh, no. okay. Anyone want a scarf for a blanket or hand warmers? We are so well prepared, thank you. Anyone? No, aren't those the best, those hand warmers? <laughs> the best. The best. Okay, so two things um, about yam soup that I want to share, and there's probably 12 more after. But the first one that I want to say is that um, we made a joke about the octopus as being an octave. Well, I'll tell you something magical that I've learned, and I'm sorry, I don't know the source, and I didn't know I was going to bring it up tonight. Maybe I would have looked. But um, musicians in the house, how many notes do we have right now? Seven. Let's sing them. Do, re, mi, la, so, la, di, do. So do is the eighth, right? So return. So really we have seven on the regular Western scale. Now there are other scales in other cultures. 
I have had the privilege of studying a little bit of ethnomusicology around the world, and I can tell you there are different skills. The Indian skill is very different, for example. But, <laughs> but in the time of Mashiach, it says that there's going to be, you're going to love this, the musician corner in the back, there's like a, all those guys in the back are all musicians. There's going to be an eighth note, that God is going to add a note that we don't yet recognize, which is for musicians like... Did you know that? Isn't that a cool Torah? And it makes sense because eight is beyond, right? Seven is of this realm. Everything in this world is seven. Seven days of the week, seven natural. But eight, Hanukkah, bris, that's beyond, and that's the eighth note that will be added. Isn't that oh, nice. oh, nice. I already made the joke. Someone online was like, how come you always say, oh, my God, it's so cool? And I'm like, duh, I'm from L.A. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, so cool. <laughs> you take Neely out of L.A. Okay, so now I want to say another thing. Miriam was a prophetess, and in the verse, when it describes that Miriam bust, as we have any Miriams here? It's your night. Yeah? Yay! Miriam, and we also have Miriam Barilana. I love you, girlfriend. That's, I'm not pointing to you guys, she's online. Um, okay, does that, raise your hand if you know a Miriam. <laughs> Me in the tree. That's it, you guys? Gil, you don't know a Miriam? Seriously? <laughs> Oh, I got to introduce you to my friend Razel Miriam, Linda Miriam. <laughs> oh, okay. So Miriam, she was a prophetess. And so from the time she was like, what, six years old? Was she six when she had the prophecy about Moshe being born? I think she was six. Any Torah mm. teachers in the house remember? No? Okay. I think she's six when she has the prophecy that Moshe will be born and he will redeem everybody through the water. So she knew what it was going to be like. So when they were packing to leave their house, guys, who has moved homes in the last two years, three years? Oh, wow. Wow. Shkoya for coming out here. It's a bit hard, right? How much, how much time did it take you to pack up? So how much, give me an approximation. How much time did it take you to pack? Wow. <laughs> did you have a clue come in and help you? Wow, I'm impressed. Okay, so oh, wow. one woman over here packing an apartment, it's like a month-long process, okay? We're talking three and a half million people, and they had to just bust out of there. So, and you couldn't, you could take what you had on your back. That's it, you're going for a long journey, 40 years, you know? They didn't know, but we know. Um, but like, what would you take? Did they have that many? Did they have that many possessions? It's a great place? question. They left I rich. mean, if you go to a third world country, that's probably how yeah, we lived. Pots, and they have enough stuff. Pans, Pots, pans, rocks. the rocks, yeah. clothing, uh, uh, like blankets. blankets. Did you say what? Oh, and Nahon, hello, don't forget, they each had 90 donkeys per person full of riches. That's like 90 Range Rovers full of riches, treasures. They have all the treasures. What did they take with them? I said Miriam was a prophetess. What did they take? The um, that is also true. And they, sorry, that's so unladylike. <laughs> it was, I mean, you can't have going down on your knees. Men don't do that. I know, ever. I know. What are you going to do? Leggings, they fall. Uh, awkward. Okay. Oh, God. All these ladies can We're all here with you. Don't worry. I'm just having a moment of shame. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody even noticed it. No one noticed Oh gosh. Okay. So all I'm saying is if you have all your riches and all your pots and all your pans and you don't even know where you're going and you don't even know how you're getting out of Egypt and you don't know the sea is going to split, do you also bring your boom box and be like, this is going to be a great journey. What? Oh yeah. Great. Do you bring your boom box? Yes or no? Yes. What do you mean? Always. You're leaving Egypt. Yeah, what do you mean? Yes. You gotta bring this. You gotta. You gotta. Well, well, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. Okay, well, you guys are funky and the descendants of Miriam. <laughs> but Miriam, okay, well, you guys totally killed it. But really, what you're supposed to say is no, I would only take my pots and my pans and my blanket and some of my riches. Miriam was a prophetess, and so she knew that leaving Egypt, because by the way, another misconception, we think that Passover night, we sit at our Seder table, and that night we got out of Egypt and we went through the sea. Is that true or false? No. False. Oh, you guys are learned. How many days did it take us to get from leaving Egypt to Yamsu? I have no idea. 40 days. 
Six days. Six freaking days! It wasn't easy! And by the time they got to Yamsuk, there's wild animals, snakes, scorpions, lions on one side, the raging sea, because Hashem made the sea go bonkers on one side. They had Egyptians, 600 chariots of Egypt, the finest Egyptians, the ones that were left over, chasing them from another side. And the other side, they have this horrible idol tower that was like this sexual immorality statue that kept everybody from leaving Egypt in a black magic kind of way. So this is not like, oh, this is great, we're going on a family trip, y'all, Vegas, baby, Vegas. No, this is like they're leaving into the wilderness. It's scary as heck. When's the last time you had a lion on one side, an Egyptian on one side, a raging storm in front of you, and a really dark orgy behind you? <laughs> Every day. Welcome to LA. But Miriam knew, but Miriam knew, Miriam knew it was going to be good. She knew it was going to be good, and so she had all the ladies bring their camera in. Now, tonight, for the people that will actually take one and take a Sharpie and spend time afterwards and decorate it, there's a custom in Israel to have a tambourine next to your door so that you, like Miriam, will be awaiting Geula. We have tambourines for everybody we have um, 40 but 40 will do. Um, so, but listen don't just take it and put it in your kids toys this has to be nailed on a nail next to your wall I want you to write the word Geula draw yourself send you a picture split. send me a picture there's sharpies here you can doodle while I talk if you really want a tambourine you could be one of the 40 please take and pass hold on coming around thank you so much to Tamar who placed the order for these before I even knew it was happening I was like guys what do you think about decorating tambourines Tamar's like they're ordered <laughs> So you can take your own yam soup and we're going to keep it. If, uh, if anyone wants to start decorating, you can pass Sharpies around. These are my mom, so they come with good vibes. Um, you can I'm sorry, Facebook world, we're going to take a minute to do tambourine distribution. It's very important for our mental health. Okay, tambourines are going around. What are we writing on them? What are you writing on them? Great question. It's your art project. Um, not too late. You want to inspire yourself to um, read that off. Oh, guys, the year is so not over. Just so you know, we're halfway through. I mean, go if you want, but anyone who wants more Torah, like it's here, and we're gonna be only halfway through the Bible. Oh, is it? Um, the question of what to write on your tambourine. Well, when you're leaving your door. Look at you, big strong man. What do you need to see? What do you need to read? What do you need to see and what do you need to read to believe that the next minute you open your door, God is going to help lift you over to Israel and take you into the Messianic times? Oh, wow. Gotta be honest. I want to dive back in because we still have at least a good half hour to go. And I don't know, I think this material rocks, but it, you do you, boo, you know. Take everyone, everyone do what you got to do, but I really want to bring the energy back together. Okay, so I want to share with you one of my favorite, favorite Torahs about going through the split sea from the Midrash. Um, and it connects to the idea of, so, oh, so what are we supposed to write on the tambourine? When you see that by your door, Whatever will inspire you to believe that you that national and personal redemption is available in the blink of an eye, we're trying to inspire belief in ourselves. That messianic age and the future redemption is not a concept that we speak about, but a reality that we're trying to pull into our lives. You know, I learned from my teacher Shifrakana Hendry that there's this concept of um, collective consciousness. I didn't know about this even though I was a hippie for a long time, I didn't know. This idea of collective consciousness, if you've never heard of it, is that there's sort of, the way that there's a cloud on the on the Mac, Apple computers, right? Everyone knows the iCloud, and all your like information is uploaded there. So too, spiritually speaking, there's something called, raise your hand if you've heard this idea of collective consciousness. It's psychological. Idea. Yeah, it's a psychology idea. It's also very spiritual, new age, yeah. whatever. And the idea is that there is a collective consciousness. Like you have your consciousness, right? But then there's a collective consciousness. 
And when we enhance this collective consciousness, when we when we enhance it with our belief, with our faith, um, it changes the reality of all of our existence. So the more that each one of us believes that salvation, and it's such a yucky English word, but geula is possible for us, um, the more it becomes a reality. And so the more of us that have tambourines at our door and I'll say, heck yeah, there's a possibility, even a 2% possibility that I'm gonna walk out this door and step into the temple in Jerusalem, the more of us that believe that's a possibility, the more of a possibility it is. Okay? Okay. Friends in the back, leave or come in. I am having patience issues. <laughs> um, please. <laughs> You know what? I'm so rude, though. I said everyone feel free, and then they're feeling free, and I'm getting on their back. Sorry, <laughs> have a great time back there. <laughs> Good. Let go. Good job. Okay. So, what is a song? Does anyone here compose? Anyone here make music? Yeah, you do. I've written a song. That's awesome. Anyone here ever written a song? It's not so much my thing. I like to sing mm. songs, but I don't write them. Anyone here write songs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do. Guys in the back, you guys are songwriters, right? Songwriters. Yeah. Fire marshal's a songwriter. You wrote one song. Okay, so why am I asking that? Because what is a song? A song is a composite of all the different pieces of notes and they, they have to fit together nicely, correct? Everyone can understand that? Mm -hmm. So now I want to tell you why God chose a song to get us through Yamsu. One of the miracles that happened to us as we were walking through the sea, as we're walking, and these sea walls, and you could go to last, last year's she or if you're interested, these sea walls split up into the exosphere, okay? They split all the way into the universe. These walls went approximately 900 miles high, according to one interpretation. And they were clear glass, and there was glass beneath you, and they're up into the universe. It's as if you're like literally walking through the universe as you're going through Yamsuf. If you've never heard that imagery, it's amazing. But then we saw and we experienced different things going through there. And one of the things we experienced was that we saw each one of us, Vani, you would see your own, pardon me, Lavana. We saw each one of us a mosaic on the wall of the water, but each mosaic was personalized. And what was the mosaic? It was the pieces of your life coming together to form a beautiful piece of art. Wow. All those places that you didn't understand, why is this happening? Why'd she break up with me? Why'd he do this? Why that? Why'd my father this? Why'd my mother this? Why am I sibling that? Why'd I have to go through that? Why'd that person do this to me? You saw all the pieces of your life coming together to form a magnificent picture. Wow. 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 Wouldn't that be nice if we could finally understand our lives? And that's part of what redemption is, you see? The whole thing of going through Yamsuf is it's your redemption. You finally understand what's going on. You finally see all the pieces of your life coming together, and that's essentially what a song is. It's all the pieces coming together to make beautiful harmony. Right? It's making sense more now why it's a song? Yeah. Okay. Guys, um, movements, clapping, Woo! noises. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Okay, I'm going to skip, skip, skip a little. Uh, side note, the Zohar says that if you say every single day as Yashir with Kavana, you will merit to sing the future song of Mashiach in your lifetime. Amen. Please, God. Amen. Okay. Can you say that one more? Uh, yeah. Uh, it, this is from a book by uh, Rav Shalom Brat. He should have an Aliyat Neshama. Her Shabbat contains Az Yashir. It's recited each day just before the closing blessings of Tzuki de Zimra. The Holy Zohar teaches that every person who chants the song with kavana, with intent, on a daily basis will merit singing it together with Mashiach and all of Israel and the Holy Land in the time of our ultimate redemption. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, fun fact that I'm not going to get into. But Zohar talks about how actually what split in Yamsuf was the molecules, that every molecule of water actually split, wow. but we'll have wow. to save that for another time. Um, mm. Where are we at time, please? It is 9.35. 9.35? All right, that's cool. 15 minutes, sounds good to everybody? Take your Perfect. time, no rush. We got Thank you. To uh, yeah, so it's the coffee I had at like 7.30. We can make another one, it's okay. No, 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 you don't want that. You want an espresso? We can get one. No, 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 you really don't want that, I promise. Here, I'll, I'll, Uber, I'll Uber it. Um, okay. Okay, so there's so much. Actually, the truth is, in seminary, I teach an entire course called Music and Torah, and I tried to take just the topic from every class and make it into a shear to wow. condense it. 
but really every single chord that I have is an entire hour long class. This topic is huge because really everything is music. So just to give you like a concept of, of this, is this, any, is this touching anyone's music? Is this starting to make sense why music is so important in our lives? Yeah. Another thing that Rich Lomo mentions, and it's because I've skipped a few chords, so it's out of context, but he says in order to sing, you have to be free. You know, the slaves from Africa, they used to sing to tell you that no matter how much you tried to enslave them, they were still free. Wow. And he says, this is because, yeah, wow, well, right? He says, this is because singing comes from the world of freedom. When you sing, you're telling evil, you don't have dominion over me. Mm. It's really, really powerful. Okay. Um, <clears throat> other things that are very important in Judaism, and we will get back to the like actual biblical sequence after, um, after the Song at the Sea, um, is that another thing that we see here from Miriam is that music is deeply entrenched in prophecy. All of the prophets we had, they prophesied only in a state of, of joy. And so what if they weren't in a state of joy? What would they do? Sing, 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 right? They would sing. So music and prophecy are deeply, deeply tied together in Judaism. Just raise your hand if you knew that or have thought about it. Okay, great, so great, new news for a lot of us. And throughout history, this is the way that a prophet entered into a prophetic state. Who do you guys know about that had a harp? David. There you go. Yeah. King David was one of our famous harpists. Um, another thing, alternatively, which I, I, I won't take time with, but that uh, music is also intrinsically connected to tshuva. Um, and I'll tell you why, actually. The end. Hold on, maybe I'll put that on top. Another amazing thing, by the way, that happened, and it's, uh, the source is, uh, I got this from Rabbi Bra, but he says that Rabbi Meir says that one of the things that happened at Yamsuf, one of the miracles that happened, this is unbelievable, um, as they were going through, and all of a sudden they bust out into, Az Yashir Moshe, that anyone who was pregnant, that their stomach went clear and you could see the fetuses singing along. Oh. <laughs> it happens also at Har Sinai, but you'll have to come back next week to, to learn about getting the Ten Commandments. Um, yeah, so that's super cool. Um, yeah, isn't that amazing? And there's a whole reason, is it amazing or is it freaky? That's yeah, all of our religion, yeah. right? Um, but there's, there's reasons and explanations and, and if we have more time later, we could dive into why. Okay, later in the Bible, what's another very, very famous song that Moses sings? Anyone know? At the end, close to the end of the Bible, there's a very, very famous, it's a whole chapter of our Bible, and it's called Ha'azinu. Ha'azinu, towards the end of the Bible, there's a whole song that Moshe sings. In fact, we know that there's 10 songs throughout. How many of these songs have already been sung in history? Nine. And what's the final song? Yeah. Song of Mashiach. Anyone that was at the class at your house, we gave her that Torah, which we'll give in the end. Other songs, anyone know other famous songs throughout throughout our history in the Tanakh? There's a woman that sings a song. It's not Miriam, although... Devorah. Devorah, right? We have Devorah's song. We also know that, how did Yehoshua bring down the walls of Jericho? Bass guitar and shofarot, right? It was the sound of the shofar that brought down the walls. We have, it's in the prophets, it's in kings, it's in chronicles. And what do we say? Who was the famous harp player? Now we're getting into Nach, part of the Tanakh. David. David. And what else did he do? What did King David do besides play the harp? He, he wrote music. <laughs> what did he write? He wrote music. <laughs> what did he write? Tehillim. Tehillim, songs. All of the psalms are not actually poems. They were songs. Okay? Who else after King David was a famous musician? Who was a famous musician right after King David?
magic cloth. Thank yeah, you. You're so helpful. <laughs> yeah. um, Charlene, will you try to replug this into one of the energy sources? Perhaps that one? Okay, so check this out. It wasn't just 30 to 40,000 Levim singing because that would be amazing. Wouldn't you be inspired to Chuva if you walked into Dodger Stadium and everyone's like, you can do this. I believe in you. Never give up hope. Isn't there like a Disney song about never give up hope or something? Is there one? Yeah, yeah. they're all about that. Oh, okay, right. Just around the river bend. You, know, yeah. like, you can do this, Neely. We believe in you. You got this. And I'm like, okay, I messed up, but there's so many thousands of people singing my heart open. I can do tshuva. Guess what? There was also an orchestra. How many people were in the orchestra? No. So not as many, <laughs> right? But between four to five thousand instruments at any given time. So you have thirty thousand voices and four thousand instruments welcoming you to come into this house of love and prayer to come close to God. Now, is that a different idea of what you thought about when you thought about korbanot in the temple? Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for this Torah. I told you this content was good. <laughs> And, uh, and every day they had a different tehillim, a psalm that they would sing. We know this because they're still in our prayer book. When we say today, Hayom Yom Sheni Shebo Hayu Halevim Omrim Bebet Hamikdash, today is the second day of the week on which the Levites would sing the song. In it wasn't just singing; it was like it was recreating heaven in a way. You know, it's really we can. This is this is important. Was it a conductor? Was it like organic? Oh, I'm sure they were the conductor. Hashem was the conductor. Hashem was the conductor. <laughs> Hashem, I mean, I'm sure there's a baby. There's no, a no, yeah. for the conductor. We say that all the time in Tehillim, right? Okay, guys, look how good we're doing. We only have this much left. Woo! 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 Oh! 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 <laughs> and we need a review. <laughs> and we need a review. That's right. Okay. I'm just, I'm skipping some stuff, but that's okay. It will happen. Um, by the way, you know, music didn't end with the temple. Music has been the thing that has carried our people through many, many generations. And more recently, you know, we have all of the Hasidic nigunim. If anyone here is Chabad, they are so serious about their nigunim. It's really incredible. Um, we have Reb Shlomo, the sweet singer, who said that actually none of his thousands of songs were his, but rather he channeled them from the Levi'im in the Beit HaMikdash, from the Levites in the temple. Um, and we have us. And, you know, I won't get into it too much, but Kabbalistically speaking, the, the nigunim are said, the Hasidic nigunim, if you look at like a musical, um, I don't remember what that's called. Staff. That's the, sta the, the staff mm. with the lines is also... It's a stat. Oh, cool. So, in fact, it, in, there's there's five lines in a general music on, on music notes. I, I didn't pay such good attention in orchestra. Mm -hmm. I was oh, I so was bad. bad in orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> I was always <laughs> pretending to be able to read the notes, and I never could. It was <laughs> so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And you read too. This chair, and she was so good, and I was just like, I hope no one hears me. <laughs> 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 so the five lines correlate to the five levels of the soul and the spaces between there are four and that correlates to the to the the four worlds okay so there's like it's just it's really endless I just wanted to give us like a yummy bite of Shabbat Shira and how much this is a part of our tradition. interesting the spaces in between also are in space right so God's face is inside the stanza say it again the, the, the notes that are in those spaces spell face. Mm -hmm. right? oh. So God's face oh, is literally beautiful. in the music. Do you want to tell them what you mean by that for people that aren't necessarily musicians? Oh, for those three musicians, the, all the, you know, each of the notes has a letter, and F, the letters F, the notes F, A, C, and E are arranged in such a way on, it, from the bottom to top in the spaces. The spaces. Oh, yeah. So it spells that's face. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's how I remember notes. Which makes so much sense. Um, okay, so now we're going to get towards the end of time, right? So we've entered into our time. We talked about Hasidic music. We all know the Klezmer Festival on Tzvah. Shout out to all my Tzvah homies. Um, we know that music is a huge part. In fact, uh, there's a, a group of women, the Pico Women's WhatsApp group. And today they were having a discussion and they were asked, they were, they were a bunch of young moms who are like, you know, just what a young mom is overloaded with, with stuff. And they're asking, how do we make Shabbat special? 
And so a lot of the moms were saying through nigunim, you have to sing. If you don't sing on Shabbat, it's not going to be special. So we still carry this tradition today. And as we know, you know, we sing Mehera, Mehera, Shem Elokeinu. That we sing Ad Yishama, which means we will hear Be'are Yehuda in the cities surrounding Judah and Jerusalem. Uve Chutzot Yerushalayim in the outskirts of Judah. Kol Sason Vekol Simcha, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness. Kol chatan kol kala, the voice of the bride and the groom. Our prophecies teach us that we will hear, we're anticipating the tenth song. And as we said, this is the song of what? Mashiach. The song of Mashiach. So when you wonder, how will I, you can't go, I have something for you in my car. The, how will I know? How will I, how will I know when the Mashiach comes? How will I know? Because we're going to hear a beautiful song. And as we learned at Leah's house, this song, what is the song of Mashiach, you might wonder, right? Who wrote it? Is it Cindy Luffer? Is it Drake? Is it... That would be a plot. Clearly my musical stylings are yeah. like... No, those are good. Yeah. Janis Joplin. Was it Janis Joplin? Yeah. Is it Snoop Dogg, who's now Snoop Lion because he did Chuva? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really know anything. Yeah. I just, yeah. My students like teach me some stuff and I try to piece together what's going on in the world. Apparently him and Kanye did Chuva. I don't know if it's true. But, yeah. Kanye so what is, what is this song? Do you want to say it? Do you remember what we learned from Rabbi Nachman? The song of Mashiach is like this. Every night at Tikkun Chatzot, which is a fixing that Tzadikim do at midnight, they, they, they spiritually, every night until this very day, from the beginning of time, there's 36 hidden Tzadikim in the world. And they have power, spiritual power. At all times, there's always 36. There's always 36 hidden Tzadikim in the world, and if there weren't, the world would cease to exist, say our sages, okay? These 36 Tzadikim, these righteous people, every night they arise at midnight, and they spiritually gather all of the good that you did that day. Yaakov's good points, and how Dave did a chesed, and how Charlene took care of her kids, and how you help with the fire tonight, and how I prepared Torah for you. And they take all of our good points, and how he parented his kids, and how she showed up for someone, and how you came to support me, and how you were kind to each other. They collect all of these good points, all of our mitzvot, all of our midot, and they raise them up to Shemaim. And eventually in Shemaim, each one of these good deeds and good traits and the patience and the minute you withheld that Lashon Hara, it becomes a tree, a leaf, a petal in a supernal garden. And it says that at midnight, a divine spirit blows through, a wind blows through the garden and each petal, leaf, tree, flower turns into a musical note. And every night since the beginning of history, this symphony is getting more and more beautiful. And when the final note is added to the symphony, it will play and we will hear the song of Mashiach. And that is the song of all the good that every Jew has ever done in the history of mankind. Wow. That is the song of Mashiach. So the question I ask you, and then I'm going to just drop you a little beautiful passage from what I read, is what is your song? Why, is, why did you end up coming tonight? And I'm not asking you to tell me. I will ask you to tell the person next to you once I turn off Facebook. But what is your song? What are you taking from this? Why is music important in your life? Do you see how it could be a part of your Jewish tradition? Can it awaken your soul? Do you need to pray? Do you need to sing before you pray? Are you going to use music as a tool the next time you're in a funk to help you out? Um, what's it going to be for you? I, I, I left this year more as like I wanted to give you like, wow, music and Torah, it's from the beginning of creation, from before we were even born in heaven, all the way through our Bible, all the way through your life, all the way to 5782. Mm -hmm. And into the times of Mashiach, music is the beginning, music is the end, it's Yisrael, it's Breshit, it's wow. But what's it for you? What's your song? Why did you have to come tonight, spiritually speaking? I just want to put that out there for you to answer while I read you a beautiful passage. Uh, this comes from Rabbi Trugman. I really love reading his books every week for the Parsha. One of them is called Orchard of Delights, if you just want good Jewish stuff. Rabbi Chagman, go to his website, you order amazing things. Um, he says, and, okay, so he's talking, he's quoting again the Ramchal, uh, and he says that in his book, Derech Hashem, he describes prophecy, he's going back to this idea of prophecy because Miriam was a prophetess, and this is from Parsha Beshala. What Parsha are we in? Beshala. Very good. Um, 
he says prophecy is a state of consciousness that is achieved when an individual experiences an intense bond with God. And that's the idea of music. And that's what all of us know before attending this year, that when you listen to music or when that your jam comes on or whatever your vibe is, if it's heavy metal or classical or reggae or funk, whatever is your vibe, you know that something comes alive, something opens, a connection with God opens in that moment. And his paragraph here is so beautiful, I can't say it any better. So he says, Although there are a number of ways to become a fitting vessel for obtaining divine inspiration and prophetic experience, which is, by the way, returning to the people, it says in the times of Mashiach, prophecy will return to the people. Um, he says, perhaps the easiest to comprehend and use is music. For music penetrates the mind, the heart, and the soul in a manner unlike nearly any other experience. It allows the soul to soar to heavenly heights, giving people wings for their most glorious aspirations and dreams and expression to their deepest pain and existential loneliness. Music is a cosmic language, literally, because now we know the constellations and planets and the sun also sing. Music is a cosmic language that unites the physical and the spiritual, the body and the soul, universal in particular, while simultaneously transcending time, as we discussed with King David and Yaakov and Rav Shlomo, and temporal space altogether. It was exactly this lofty experience that the people of Israel achieved as they sang the Song of the Sea together. Wow. So beautiful. You could take a picture of this if you want. Yeah, for sure. Um, that's Rabbi Chugman, just so you know. So um, Rabbi Nachman says you have to turn all of your Torahs into tefillahs, and that's funny because we learned that tefillah prayer is also a song. So we have to turn all of our, all of our Torahs that we learned into a song. Uh, how we'll do that, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, but Perfect. thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you, Facebook, for being here. Thank you to our beautiful hosts. May you always have so much song in your home. May we all be blessed to have so much song in our hearts. May we mostly be blessed to just use this hour and a half to kickstart us. We have now Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Shabbos to learn about Parsha B'Shalach to give you a new uh, foundation with which to understand going through the sea, what it was like at Yam Suf. And again, like I said, uh, if you want to know about the experience, just go to YouTube from last year. And um, Amen. may we sing the song of Mashiach tonight together. Amen. Okay, so thank you. I'm going to turn off Facebook, but wait, please. Thank you guys so much for being here. I really appreciate you. Thank you for all the contributors and the sponsors. We cannot do it without you. You've hooked up all these wonderful people in LA. They had such a hard day at work, and then they came and they got pizza, and they got bubbly water, and they got chocolate and tamarinds, because of you. Yeah, thanks guys. Much love, and uh, we'll tune in soon.